Good morning and welcome back. All right, so we had the record-breaking summer. Yeah. I thought we had a break. Didn't we hit the 40s? Oh, yeah, point this we week? definitely had a break. We had a good bout of fall weather. Temperatures the coolest they've been since March. Oof. But yesterday we did break a record. We got up to 94 degrees for the high. And today we're going to likely see another record with 93 as the high. But so let, let me just get you through your day right now. Outside temperatures are dropping into the 50s early this morning. But so quickly we're going to see temperatures rise by 10 to 15 degrees in just the span of a couple of hours. By 10, it's going to be mostly sunny and 75. Now, throughout the day today, you'll notice cirrus clouds increasing, those high, wispy, thin clouds, putting a milky hue in the sky. And by noon, it'll be partly cloudy and 86. So we are already going to see a 25-degree temperature jump from sunrise to noon. Then in the afternoon, we'll be in the 90s, 93 for the high. It'll be mostly cloudy by 4 or 5 o'clock. Winds today are going to be from the south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. At least with the heat, humidity will be pleasant today. Low humidity for us, so feeling okay in the shade. In 93 in Canyon Lake, 93 in Hondo, 92 in Uvalde, 93 in Carrizo Springs, 94 in Pleasanton, Del Rio. You'll be at 94 today. 91 in Kerrville. Temperatures about uh, 10 to 15 degrees above the average. So enjoy this temporary cool weather while you can early this morning. Go on a walk. Enjoy uh, things before it gets warm. 59 in New Braunfels. 56 in Hondo. 52 in Kerrville. Good morning in Pleasanton where it's 58 degrees. 59 in Gonzales. It's already 70 though in Del Rio. Now as I mentioned, humidity will stay low today. So dew points are in the 40s. That's at the bottom of the scale there. Nice and dry outside and during the day today dew points will likely stay in the 40s so again pleasant weather but look toward the coast you can see near Corpus Christi dew points in the upper 60s this is later on tonight by tomorrow morning our dew points are going to be in the upper 60s so noticeably muggy borderline oppressively humid and then by Monday morning it is going to be oppressively humid with dew points in the 70s so Say goodbye to the cool mornings temporarily. We're going to be looking at a very spring like weather pattern. And so our morning lows are going to be much warmer than average. Morning lows will be in the 70s. It was only a few days ago that our highs were in the 70s. And this is going to be much warmer than average by about 10 degrees. Average morning low this time of year is in the upper 50s, like what we're experiencing out there right now. Now, as I mentioned, you're going to see increasing cirrus clouds today. Today. This is because of uh, Hurricane Norma, which is a Category 3 hurricane heading for Cabo San Lucas and then working its way across the western coast of uh, of. Mexico. Now, Norma is also going to be sending us some energy and some moisture, but not causing direct rainfall. So what we're going to see on Monday, a little bit of extra energy, a little bit of extra moisture out there, that equals a chance for hit or miss showers or storms throughout the day on Monday. You can see that this particular future cast model shows spotty showers and storms. Coverage should be about 40% on Monday and then with an upper level low moving in from the west, we're going to continue to see isolated chances for rain in the week ahead. The best we can do is 40% coverage on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, 30%. So we'll have a few hit or miss showers and storms. This is what I mean by a spring like weather pattern. Mornings will be humid, afternoons will be warm and muggy and there's a small chance for rain pretty much every single day of the next week. What I don't see there, Max, on the forecast is a front. So I, I don't see anything in the next seven days. However, by Halloween, there are hints that we could see a cold front. It would be nice if it felt a little bit like fall for Halloween. We'll keep you posted on that. For now, though, a lot of people still trying to enjoy fall outside. Right. So I've got your pumpkin patch forecast coming up and a look at what it's going to be like across state parks in, in San Antonio. Did you and the husband get the pumpkins? We have not gotten any okay. pumpkins yet. I think we're going to save it until right up to the last minute. That's smart because we've had pumpkins here. They go bad very quickly. They do. They do, especially if you carve them too early. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Time now just about 617, 62 degrees. All right. Some big news in the entertainment field. Rapper Megan Thee Stallion parting ways from her former record label. Latest announcement from the singer coming up.
And new releases are out this weekend from the Rolling Stones, Nancy Sinatra, and a classic Charlie Brown holiday special. We'll tell you all about them when we come back. Rolling Stones keep on rocking. The legendary band has released Hackney Diamonds, their first new studio album of original material since 2005's A Bigger Bang. The album features guest performances from Lady Gaga, Stevie Wonder, Paul McCartney, and Elton John. This time the girl is gonna stay for more than just a day. That's Nancy Sinatra and Lee Hazelwood performing I Just Can't Help Believin'. The song is from Nancy's new album, Keep Walkin', Singles, Demos, and Rarities, 1965 to 1978, which is out now on vinyl, CD, and yes, even on 8-track. The Great Pumpkin hasn't even arrived yet, but you can already celebrate Turkey Day with Snoopy and the Peanuts Gang. The complete soundtrack to a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving is now available for the first time, featuring nine previously unheard bonus tracks. Getting the popcorn pretzels and jelly beans ready in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right, staying in entertainment news, rapper Megan Thee Stallion and her former record label ending a three-year legal battle. So the 28-year-old artist, where she sued the Houston-based 1501 Entertainment in 2020. She didn't sue them once, not twice. She sued them three times. The label has said they both settled their legal differences amicably. They agreed to part ways. The rapper says she does have new music coming and it is self-funded. Well, Adele giving her fans to sing about, something to sing about. She announced her Las Vegas residency is extending one last time. The singer made the announcement on social media just yesterday, writing the shows changed her life and were a, quote, extraordinary restorative experience that I'll never forget. The final leg of Weekends with Adele kicks off in January. It's going to run through next June. Tickets go on sale next Thursday. Time now, 622, 62 degrees. So the San Antonio Public Library hosting spooky events all month long. We're going to tell you all about the events happening today, tomorrow, all the family friendly fun in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. San Antonio Public Library wants to help you and the family get ready for the spooky spirit with Halloween parties and events all October long. So from 10 or from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. today, the Land of Branch Library hosting a Halloween party. So if you're interested, the location is 233 Bushnell. Land of Boo will have activities for all ages, a costume parade, and much more. The branch manager says all of the events are an opportunity for the community to come together and celebrate accordingly. We want families to have a place, families, individuals, seniors, we have things going on for all ages, but we want them to have a place that they can gather as a community and really have something that they can do together. Some events do have age requirements. And tomorrow at the Petranco Li Branch Library, there is a Ghost Hunters event. That is for ages 16 and up. Don't worry. We know we're throwing a lot of information at you. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, we have all the events right now posted at ksat.com. Time is just about 627, 60 degrees. Don't worry, we got a lot coming up here on GMSA this morning. Still headed 630, a local nonprofit organization helping veterans get through military trauma. They're pairing them with service animals. What one local veteran has to say about his battle buddy and why he can't live without him. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Saturday, 6.30 this morning. and We got a lot going on today. So Sarah, we're starting off with some sweater weather. Starting off at 60 degrees, possibly going into the 50s. But you're saying we could see record heat today? Oh, absolutely. We're going to be getting up into the low 90s once again today. But I want to start with a look at 90 and McMullen. There's a vehicle fire there. We've been showing you this all morning long. It does look like uh, first responders are starting to get that fire under control because the smoke plume was pretty intense just about 30 minutes ago. But it, as you can see, there's still some smoke there. But it does look like the authorities are making sure everybody is safe and sound. We'll be getting more information about that. Coming up, uh, temperatures are going to drop by another few degrees here before sunrise. It's 60 degrees outside right now, 
but we are going to be seeing a quick warm up today. That being said, if you want to head out to the pumpkin patch, you can. The humidity will be low today, but it's going to quickly get warm. So try to get uh, going earlier today because by noon it's already going to be 86, 92 around 3, and we're going to have south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Want to find a pumpkin patch? Well, we've got a pumpkin patch map on KSAT right now. All you got to do is scan that QR code. It'll take you to the map. But all across south central Texas, a lot of people are going to be trying to enjoy time outdoors, perhaps at a state park. It's it's going to be warm wherever you go. So remember, take that water, take your time on those trails. It is going to be nice and dry outside with low humidity, but still warm. Devils River State Natural Area, 93. Enchanted Rock, 90. Government Canyon, 93 degrees. Lost Maples, just staying under 90, but it is still going to be warm. And I just checked with the Lost Maples State Natural Area. The trees are not yet starting to change. That doesn't happen usually until November. So, uh, but beautiful weather out there regardless because of the low humidity. However, say goodbye to those cool mornings because humidity is going to return, making it muggy in the mornings and muggy in the afternoon. However, we are going to have some spotty rain next week, so there's a lot to talk about in the forecast. I'll have details for you in just a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. As you mentioned, people are going to be out and about some of those fall activities, but we do have some news when it comes to the roadways. A lot of closures going on this weekend. Loop 1604 closures, all part of the North Expansion Project. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos explains what you need to know before you head out the door. The weekend is finally here, but if you travel along Loop 1604, you may want to start planning that commute ahead of time. Take a look at this video that where we see a lot of the construction underway for the Loop 1604 North Expansion Project. Now, this overall project stretches about 23 miles from Loop 1604 all the way to from Bandera Road to I-35, but it's been broken up into five segments. Three of those segments are currently under construction, while segments four and five are still in the development stages. Now, part of this plan is to expand the number number of lanes from 4 to 10 and keep this in mind 150,000 drivers are estimated to drive down this corridor each and every day so this road work is needed. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what you can expect overnight. So this full closure will begin Friday October 20th and take us all the way up until Monday October 23rd. Now this starts at 9 at night and finishes at 5 in the morning. So we'll see a full closure of the 1604 eastbound main lanes from the Vance Jackson Road exit ramp to the Lock Hill Selmo Road entrance ramp. So be sure to follow those detours. I want to take a drive over here now to another full closure we'll see along Loop 1604 that will begin around the same time. Now this time it will be the 1604 eastbound collector distributor at the I-10 interchange and there will be detours out there as well so just know what to expect. I want to take one more jump here now to where we'll see another closure, not a full one, but we'll see the 1604 eastbound frontage road close through the I-10 interchange. According to TxDOT, that right lane will still remain open. I know this is a lot of information to digest, but if you scan this QR code. It takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. There's a full article I've written up which breaks down the 1604 North Expansion Project as well as other closures that are taking place in our area. So plan that commute ahead of time. Thank you, Stephen. All right, a lot to talk about this morning. Just into the newsroom, a crash ending with a how of car into a house on the south side. And we now know the driver is behind bars being arrested, accused of driving while intoxicated. Take a look at your screen. San Antonio police say the driver crashed into this home around one this morning. The driver only suffering minor injuries. He was treated on the scene, then you know, detained, arrested for a DWI. Luckily, though, police say no injuries from anyone else. You can see that truck fully into the house. We're still waiting to learn the estimate of the damages. Well, the Bear County Sheriff's Office says an inmate has died after a medical episode in the jail's booking area. This man right here, 52 year old Jaime Rodriguez Valdez, he was there on charges of theft. BCSO says medical staff gave Valdez medication for a pre existing condition on Thursday. Then later that evening, Sheriff's Office says Valdez suffered a medical episode compounded by pre existing medical conditions. The sheriff says prison staff tried to help, but he died shortly after. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office now will have to determine the exact cause of death. Well, now to an update to three local congressmen who sent a letter to the National Park Services and they all did it in an effort to create a plan to preserve our missions after seeing a startling rise in vandalism. Uh, the National Park Services, they've responded saying it has experienced persistent crime and vandalism since the start of the pandemic 
adding it can't speculate as to why this increase. So when it comes to a plan to preserve our sites, they said in part, quote, the National Park Service has been working closely with senior city and county officials, including law enforcement for the city of San Antonio, Bear County and other federal agencies, as well as partners and community groups to protect the iconic and internationally significant San Antonio missions. Now to Ukraine, where they are more than a year and a half into war with Russia, and United States funding for Ukraine left out of that stopgap bill that Congress passed to keep the government open. Avery Everett explains that now people locally here in San Antonio, they're worrying and they're feeling that the war in Ukraine has been all but forgotten. It is still very real. Even an ocean away, Anna Stamp says it's hard to think about what's still happening in her home country of Ukraine. It's real and reading the news every day and seeing dead people and seeing the blood and seeing dead kids is just, it's heart breaking. Heartbreak that's been happening now for a year and a half since Russia invaded Ukraine in February of 2022. I cannot imagine what people there under bombs and under sirens going through. Stam says she's still pushing for support and doing all she can from San Antonio. We just uh, gather everything that we can collect and then we send uh, to uh, help injured and um, wounded um, soldiers and citizens in Ukraine. But she says she can't do it alone. When Congress passed a stopgap bill to keep the government open just weeks ago, it didn't include funding for Ukraine. In his address last night, President Joe Biden said it was, quote, vital to support Ukraine and Israel through their current conflicts. Ukraine is like as little as the state of Texas fighting the country that is five times bigger. Just down the street, the staff at European Dumplings are serving support through their meals. Some of the revenue that we bring in goes directly over there. Still fundraising and finding ways to move forward. And this has kind of been pushed to the back page, but it's still very real. With a fight that's far from over. It feels like it will never end. People here in San Antonio say they won't stop showing support. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 6.38, 60 degrees. All right, picture this. You pull up to a Chick-fil-A drive-through and you wonder why no one is answering to take your order. Then you realize it is Sunday. Well, there's some good news. We're gonna tell you how you can make your own Chick-fil-A favorites at home. That's still ahead, plus. Even if I'm nervous, even if I'm scared, I'm still gonna push through it because I have private with me. Local veteran talks about his service dog, the importance that he's had on his life after the break, what their journey has been like since being paired, and why he can't live without him. All right, we've been talking about it through the morning. We started to get a break from those record-setting temps, but set another record yesterday. Could we break another today? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. Well, San Antonio is Military City USA. We have a great story to tell you about. So facing fears, reaching goals, and living life to the fullest. It's what one local veteran and his service dog, they're doing and have been doing together. This after the, they were paired through a nonprofit organization, Canines for Warriors. Now the two can't leave each other's sights. KSAP producer Caitlin Silva has their story. Meet Danny on Vimala an army veteran of 20 years and his battle buddy private a black labrador retriever yeah. good here you go danny suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder and a traumatic brain injury following explosions in iraq private was introduced to danny through canines for warriors a nonprofit organization that pairs trained service dogs with veterans suffering from ptsd and other military trauma. Before private, Danny spent five years after his retirement from the Army away from the outside world. Before I received private, I spent five years after my retirement isolated um, in my garage. Um, too anxiety filled, too afraid, too angry to actually leave my house. But once I was paired with private, the day I paired, I cried. I cried hard <laughs> the day I was paired with him. But since I've had private, like I never feel alone anymore. Now the two are inseparable. Private helps Danny achieve his goals, one he hasn't reached in years. He also forces me to get out of my comfort zone, set a goal and achieve that goal. One of my latest goals was to, to go to the lake as I have not been to any 
water activities in over a decade. And I was actually able to take my three kids in private and we all went to the lake. Since private's been with me, I can't see my life without him because he is a part of me. Danny, now a warrior trainer at the nonprofit, mentors other veterans and teaches them how to depend on their service animals. His message to other veterans, you are not alone. At one point, I thought I was alone. And once I met Canines Fours, got involved in an organization, I found out that I'm not. I would just tell every veteran, do not give up. Canines Fours is here, other organizations are here. But you are not alone. As for Danny and Private, their journey has just begun. But at the end of the day, he is my battle buddy. He takes care of me, and I take care of him. Caitlin Silva, KSAT 12 News. That was a great story. Caitlin actually producing the show, so great job, Caitlin. For more information about Canines for Warriors, how you can get involved, just head to KSAT.com. And Sarah, we saw them going on some hikes. Yeah. Great, beautiful, powerful pictures of the two of them. We know a lot of people trying to take advantage of what what seems like a start of fall weather, but it's not going to end that way. Hey, it is going to be hot today, okay? It's going to be record heat, but at least the humidity will be low. So it's actually not going to be that bad for outdoor activities. Get outside, enjoy it. Just know it is going to be hot. The forecast high in San Antonio is 93, likely to beat the record set back in 1979. And just about a lot of locations around uh, South Central Texas, including Del Rio, going to be dealing with record heat today. Forecast high is 94, record is 93. Is it? unusual to see 90s this time of year? Absolutely not. In fact, our average last 90 degree day is about the 18th of October. So it's it's fairly normal to see temperatures in the 90s uh, this year. It's just a bit of a weather whiplash because you look outside right now. It's 56 in Hondo and 56 in Pleasanton, 58 in Uvalde, 51 in Kerrville, 60 here in San Antonio. As we zoom into the metro area, 57 in Port Assay, 58 in Converse. Good morning in New Braunfels where it's 59 degrees, 53 in Bulverde, and 54 in Bernie. So by the end of the day, temperatures are going to be hotter by about some 30 plus degrees. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. As we look toward 10, it's going to be 75. So already in the mid 70s, just in three hours here. Mostly sunny skies will turn partly cloudy to mostly cloudy with those high thin cirrus clouds up in the atmosphere. Around noon, it's going to be 86. And then in the afternoon, we'll be in the 90s, 93 for the high, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Sunset should be pretty good tonight with temperatures uh, in the 80s, but uh, it, it'll look nice with all of the uh, cirrus clouds out there. Sunset close to about 7 uh, this evening. As we look at the dew point forecast, enjoy the low humidity while it lasts. One last dry day here Saturday before dew points start to go up into the 60s by tomorrow. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, our dew points will be near 70 degrees. That is pretty noticeably humid out there. It's going to be humid all week long, and as I mentioned earlier, Early tomorrow morning, dew points are going to be in the 60s. Early tomorrow morning, we could have some fog out there in the morning hours because of the higher humidity, calm winds. So take that into consideration as you plan your early Sunday morning plans. Maybe you're going to early morning mass or early morning church service. Know that there will be some fog early tomorrow morning. So as we summarize the weekend, record heat today, but low humidity. Tomorrow, muggy and morning fog. Temperatures will be cooler, but noticeably muggy. Here's a look at the weather setup. You can see cirrus clouds working their way in from the west. These are cirrus clouds from Hurricane Norma, a Category 3 hurricane set to make landfall along Cabo San Lucas, weaken and turn into the Mexican coast by about Monday. Now, while we are not going to be seeing direct rainfall from Norma, we are going to be seeing energy and moisture slung our way towards South Central Texas on Monday. So Monday, there will be areas of rain. It's going to be about 40% coverage. So not everybody is going to see rain, but the possibility is there for a few hit or miss downpours. And then before we can dry out, a low pressure system is going to swing across uh, parts of Texas and that'll keep rain in the forecast for us. Now, not a good chance of rain, but just those isolated showers and storms possible. So when we look at rain chances, 40% Monday, 30% Tuesday, Wednesday, and only 20% Thursday and Friday. So I'm calling it a spring-like weather pattern, you know, with those hit or miss showers. Morning lows will be near 70 degrees, so you're not going to need a sweater all week long, unlike last week. So very spring-like weather pattern. No real hints at a cold front this week. However, Max, I am seeing indications that there could be a cold front 
right around the time of Halloween, but that is just outside of our 2020 vision, so you'll have to stay tuned to the forecast for that. All right, keeping you on your toes. Yeah, you know, that's fall. It always keeps us on our toes. Cold fronts sweep through every week and a half or so. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, just about 6.50, 60 degrees out. All right, it is Saturday. That means we got a new episode of Texas Eats. David Elder giving us an inside look at the newly reopened Great Moss Inn. It's in Holotus, and they have a haunted restaurant tour. What the co-owner caught on the security camera going to send it shivers down your spine. We're going to explain next. So much history, so many people have celebrated anniversaries, birthdays, and we decided to kind of take up the mantle and take it to the, to the next face of it. So the haunted aspect of it didn't scare you away? It scared my sister a little bit. <laughs> I bet it did, yeah. uh, But uh, not too much for me, not too much for me. So you're going to take us to three different spots. So where are you taking us today? We're going to go to the main dining room. And then we're gonna visit what we now call the flower room. And I'll tell you a couple of stories from those, from those places. Something happened quite recently here at, uh, in our new bar. So the first spot is the bar. And it's just like right here, right? It's just right here. Something happened over here recently, right? Something paranormal. Uh, yes, it did. And we actually caught it on our cameras. Ghost Hunter, David Elder. All right, I love Chick-fil-A. Odds are, if you're watching right now, you like Chick-fil-A as well, especially the one on Houston Street. It's new, it's clean, it's fantastic, but they don't open on Sundays. Here's the thing though, you can now make your own. You can create your favorite meals at home because Chick-fil-A has released its first ever digital cookbook. Here's the best part, it is free. The book inspired by Chick-fil-A's shared table program put together in hopes of raising awareness of food insecurity and food waste. There are 26 recipes in the cookbook that contain so many known favorites, like the chicken nuggets. It even has some discontinued food items. Time now, 6.54, 60 degrees. Let's take a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, new breaking developments in the Israel-Hamas war. The first signs of humanitarian aid entering Gaza this morning through Egypt's Rafah border crossing. Plus new details about those two American hostages released by Hamas as the war reaches its 14th day. We have team coverage. And back home in the U.S., how stalemate as Republicans are set to meet this Monday, trying to restart the process of electing a speaker, what you need to know. And a dream weekend for sports fans we're counting down to the world series the final teams in the fight and gma is at college game day this morning plus gronk is here in studio with a big announcement that's all ahead here on gma and calaveras aren't just the painted skulls you see every year calaveras can be written and they are humorous and a poetic Day of the Dead tradition. A calavera is written about someone who's still alive. To poke fun or to bring somebody down in the form of a pun or satirical piece of poetry. And it is usually written about someone who is prominent either in politics, in sports, in entertainment. Generally, they all die in the calavera. Not in reality, but figuratively. Calaveras are not written about people who are already dead, and that's because a person cannot defend themselves. It's cowardly, I think, to make fun of someone who has already died. So to write a good calavera, you strip that person down to the very essence. You pick out that quality that you either like or dislike, and then you write it in a form that makes fun of it, and that makes that person come alive for you and I. Alrighty, a bit of a weather whiplash today. Waking up at 59 degrees outside right now, but by 9, it's going to be 70. By 10, mid-70s, around noon, 86 degrees. This afternoon, highs are going to climb into the low 90s, likely going to be seeing a record in San Antonio. By the way, uh, humidity will be low today, so at least it'll be a dry heat. Humidity does return tomorrow. We'll have some fog. And then by Monday, there's a shot at rain, 40% chance, 30% 
percent Tuesday and Wednesday. Take a look at those morning lows. Not that crisp, cool fall air. We're going to be near 70 degrees just about every day this week. Highs in the mid 80s, but feeling muggy outside. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us to start your morning. Don't go anywhere. We are going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. See you back here at 8 a.m. Look at that gorgeous sunrise. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are starting off with a live look out of the Alamo City, dipping into the 50s. The sunrise was beautiful. The sun is out. It is shining. Can't even see a cloud in the sky from that perspective. Good morning. It is Saturday. It is October 21st. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So we saw the beautiful sunrise. Yeah. We just came off our respective weekends. Did you do anything fun? Did you make it out and about? I did make it out and about. The weather was great, although a uh, hot yesterday. We got up to record today, yesterday, and we're going to do it again today. But yeah, I had a great weekend. I ended up seeing Killers of the Flower Moon, which is nice. pretty good. Definitely I, recommend. Yeah, definitely recommend it. All right, 59 degrees outside right now, 60 in New Braunfels, 54 in Bernie, 49 in Kerrville, and 68 in Del Rio. My friends, these are the coolest temperatures we are going to, whoa, where did I go there? Let's see. These are the coolest temperatures we are going to see in San Antonio for at least about a, a week. I mean, big temperature swing today. This morning, 59 degrees, but by this afternoon, 93 for the forecast high. That's a 34 degree temperature swing. 93 in San Antonio, 91 in Bolverde, 93 in Rio Medina, 94 in Bandera, 92 in Comfort. In the pollen count today, we've got molds low at 230. Ragweed and pigweed are also low, but not too bad in the pollen count and humidity will return tomorrow with some morning fog and highs in the mid 80s. I'll be back with a look at your forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Sarah. We know so many people out and about this weekend for some fun fall festivities. But as you get ready to head out the door, we do have some closures to tell you about. The main lanes, the Loop 1604 eastbound fully closed and well, we also have the exit ramp to Lock Hill Selma Road entrance ramp. You're going to see closures along Loop 1604 eastbound collector distributor at the I-10 interchange. And of course, Loop 10 or Loop 1604 eastbound frontage road at the I-10 interchange. We know we're throwing a lot of numbers at you. So we have the full list of the closures and detours on our website, ksat.com. All right, top story on ksat.com. It has been trending through the night. Family members of a murdered teenager now accused of attacking a man on trial for the crime. And this all unfolded right in the middle of a Bear County courtroom. So take a look. This melee, as you see on your screen, this is in the 144th District Court. It ended with four people, including two minors, being charged with assault and impeding a court proceeding. Now, this was supposed to be what was a routine hearing for the defendant, Victor Rivas. Now, he was charged with killing 15-year-old Ethan Soto in May of last year. Rivas, who was handcuffed and placed in the jury box, well, he was repeatedly struck with closed fists after members of Soto's family jumped over a partition and attacked him. Administrative Judge Ron Ron Hell says these types of violent outbursts, they can in fact happen in court. Think about courtrooms, you're bringing in victims of violent crimes with people that are accused of committing those crimes. And so oftentimes courtrooms can become powder kegs. One little spark can ignite. Ignite it did. So Rivas, the man who was attacked while well, in the jury, he was checked out by paramedics at the courthouse for a facial injury. And Ron Ron Hell confirmed that Judge Michael Mary hit the panic button, left the courtroom as the judges are instructed to do so. Luckily, no court staff members were hurt during the brawl. Well, this morning, we are working to learn more about this man, 40-year-old Jesus Prado. He's the suspect accused of shooting two San Antonio police officers. These officers responded to a domestic violence call after reports of Prado dousing a home in gasoline, threatening to set it on fire. It's a story we've been following closely since it unfolded on Thursday. And the two San Antonio police officers who were shot, both are expected to survive. One may owe his life to another man's heroic actions. The man's quick thinking and his courage very likely brought life-saving time for the downed officer. Our Jonathan Coto walks us through these intense moments. In a quiet neighborhood on the city's northeast side, a typical day took an extraordinary turn when a police officer was injured in the line of duty. The kids were all outside playing and they were witnessing this, uh, this disturbance. San Antonio police arriving at this home on Thursday evening for reports of a domestic disturbance. 
Rael says he quickly ushered his kids and others into his home as police arrived. Minutes after, we started hearing shots fired. Lots of shots. What happened next is nothing short of miraculous. While I was on the front porch kind of keeping an eye out, um, avoiding the fire, an officer just ran around the corner and said, I need help, you know, immediately told me, reach for this tourniquet and help me put this on. Rael, without hesitation, became a true hero. I dropped the phone and he said, let's get me inside and lock the door behind me, please. I said, absolutely. So we came inside, I called for my wife and, um, and we rendered aid as fast as we could. He applied a life-saving tourniquet above the officer's gunshot wound. He says he has emergency response training, but the real life event put his skills to the test. Even with my training, it was uh, slower than I, and, and more difficult than, I, than I'm used to uh, under that kind of pressure. Although injured, Rael says the officer remained calm and guided him through the process. He told me what to do, and um, and I'm glad he did it. We, it. we worked together very well. He, he remained calm, and it was rough, but, you know, I think everybody did a good job. Intense moments happening on Rael's kitchen floor, his wife also playing a critical role. She was there to give him water. Um, she was there to help stop the bleeding, help me with the tourniquet. Um, I have an injured foot, so it was not easy for me. He says it took quick thinking, training, and a strong network of communication among neighbors. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Good morning headlines. This weekend marks two weeks since the terrorist organization Hamas launched its attack on Israel, leading to airstrikes and thousands of deaths in Israel and Gaza. Hamas also taking a number of hostages. Two of those hostages just released yesterday. The mother and daughter, American citizens, they were visiting from Chicago. President Joe Biden speaking with them, and they are expected to reunite with family in Israel. As for humanitarian efforts, Egyptian trucks have unloaded humanitarian aid and returned to the Egyptian side of the Rafah border crossing with Gaza. Now, this crossing was briefly opened this morning to allow the first convoy of aid trucks to enter the Gaza Strip. We do expect more details on this throughout the morning. Meanwhile, the delay in choosing a new House speaker could affect President Biden's funding request for Israel and for Ukraine. Without a speaker, technically, the House cannot pass certain proposals. Of the $105 billion that's being requested, more than half of the requests would go to Ukraine. So here in San Antonio, people are fundraising on their own. Most who have family and friends in Ukraine, and they say the country, as we know, is more than a year and a half into the war with Russia. The people here in San Antonio, they say they want to make sure it is not forgotten about. And this has kind of been pushed to the back page, but it's still very real. It's real and reading the news every day and seeing dead people and seeing the blood and seeing dead kids is just, it's heart breaking. You can read more about the story, how you can step up and help out as well. We have all the information. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, 8.07, 60 degrees. Oh my goodness, go Spurs, go. We're headed to the court. Another big night for Wemby and our San Antonio Spurs. The silver and black look fantastic. Just ahead, highlights from the big preseason win as they took on Golden State Warriors. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City. I say it looks beautiful out there. If you have things to do, I'd say try to do them early because it is beautiful there now. 60 degrees to start the day, but we could see some record breaking heat later in the day. We're going to check in with Sarah in just a few moments. For some San Antonio families, Day of the Dead means writing calaveras, poking fun at those you love or despise through these witty poems. It's common in Mexico. So how did Calaveras come to San Antonio? Would you believe that one person brought them over? Moises Espino del Castillo. Castillo meaning castle. So he then becomes the Duke of Calaveras. He was asked to write some poetry for our local newspaper back in the early, early 70s. He was a Spanish professor. So all his work was done in Spanish. So then he was asked to do some calaveras, which he objected to because he said, no one going to be able to read them in an English speaking newspaper. But nonetheless, he did write them and started then a 30 year career in writing calaveras. I think that is just one of the most incredible things that you can single-handedly say this person brought the Calaveras to San Antonio, Texas. Go 
Spurs go. I'm going to be way too giddy talking about how awesome it was to see what is seemingly our new big three take the court against real competition. So take a look. All right, opening tip off. It was 7-4, seven, 7-4, four, seven foot four, Victor Wembanyama facing off against 6-2, Steph Curry. It was the Wemby show. There was just a 90-second clip of him just dominating. Look at this. Wait for it. Quick block. Most players would stop. He takes like four strides, waits for one, almost mocks the second warrior, and barely has to jump to dunk it. Here we go again. All right, someone trying. Why are you going to try to drive on the man who's seven foot four? And then just shrieking down, and oh, you're not going to guard me out here? Bang. Swish from three. I mean, he can do it all. It is insane to watch him play. And I remember originally, remember, people were a little hesitant. He had first summer league game, didn't look great, but I'm telling you, and it's also weird to see Chris Paul on the Warriors. But this was just amazing. I mean, yeah, Steph Curry's pretty good. We know that. But if you're a Spurs fan and you watch any of these young guns play, it is amazing. A little pick and pop there from the elbow. Beautiful. Barely looks like he's trying, which is the crazy part. I would be sweating up a storm. He takes four strides, like Sarah Spivey said earlier. Four strides. He's basically down the court. That's what happens when you're seven foot four. And here we go. They win 122 to 117, 19 points, four boards, five blocks, and only 21 minutes. So up next, kick off the regular season Wednesday night, taking on the Mavericks at the Frost Bank Center. Tip-off is set for 8.30. We're going to have coverage starting that morning on GMSA. Hopefully we are on the court, and obviously we're going to have coverage through the day, all right here on KSAT 12. Okay, we're in NBA preseason, but we are in MLB postseason dugouts emptied in the bottom of the eighth inning game five of the ALCS between the Astros and the Rangers after here we go Brian Abreu hit Rangers outfielder RC with a 99 mile per hour fastball both ejected and the game just picked up from here so at this point the Rangers were up they kept going up and I know Astros fans are a little nervous but don't worry here he is the savior of Houston Altuve cranking a three-run shot to the left, top of the ninth, giving Houston the lead for good, and they will go on to win it 5-4. to four. They lead the series 3-2 to two after losing the first two games. Game six is tomorrow night, and on the other side of the board, we have the Phils, we have the Diamondbacks. If you're a Phillies fan, it was kind of a tough night. Yeah, that's me. So Schwarber, he opened up, bases empty, hit one, right shot, and, I mean, this was great. But after this, it was pretty much just the Diamondbacks the rest of the night. They won on to five, and the series is tied up two to two. I've been saying, Sarah, I'd really like it to be Astros and Phillies again next year. Get a little revenge game for the Phils. What about you? Who's your, uh, your dog in the field? I got to say, I know I live in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. But when I was really young, okay. up to 10, I grew up watching the Rangers. Okay. And then I moved to San Antonio, okay. and everybody's an Astros fan. Right. So I gotta say, I'm rooting for the Rangers. Oh I know that's goodness. controversial. <laughs> I know, I know. You're kind of wearing Astros colors too, I so we don't even am. know. What to hey, do. listen, I'm just loving that it's two Texas teams. Yeah, it's true. Else. Yes, that's pretty awesome. Sorry about your Phillies, man. It's okay. We're tied up. Yeah. We're tied up. We, yeah. we won't even make it back. That's the goal. Yeah. Either way, I'll be happy if the Astros win too, because again, bringing it to Texas is a That's good deal. Fair. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk though about the forecast for the day. Uh, we are in the 50s right now, but just in the next hour and a half, temperatures are going to warm into the 70s. Quick warm up for us under mostly sunny skies right now. By noon, a few more clouds out there, uh, cirrus clouds, especially those high thin wispy clouds that are made out of ice crystals. And then by the afternoon, we'll be in the 90s. So that is a 34 degree temperature jump from the start of the day right now at 59 to 93 by four or five o'clock. By the way, tonight, if you're heading out to any of your kids' uh, football games, high school football games, things are gonna be nice. Temperatures are going to be in the low to mid 80s, winds from the south at five miles per hour and low humidity. So it is gonna be a hot day. Temperatures are going to be well above average. In fact, in San Antonio, we're likely going to beat a record of 92, set back in 1979. 93 in Canyon Lake, 93 in Hondo, Yavali will be at 92. 91 in Kerrville, we're gonna be running some 12 
12 degrees above the average of 81. However, it is not unusual to see temperatures in the 90s this time of year. Our average last 90 degree day is on the 18th of October, so we're just a few degree, uh, days late there. Meanwhile, enjoy the cooler weather while you can right now. It's 49 in Kerrville, 59 in San Antonio, 60 in Valley, 66 in Rock Springs. Good morning in Pleasanton where it's 56. It is nice and dry outside. Dew points are in the 40s. That's at the bottom of our scale here. So even though it's going to be hot today, it is going to feel OK in the shade because of the dry air. Now you can see that air will stay dry today. Dew points in the 40s by about 5 o'clock tonight. But watch what happens overnight tonight. You can see how muggy it is in Corpus Christi with dew points in the 60s. Overnight, dew points are going to soar to near 70 degrees to start the day tomorrow. We may even have some power fog early tomorrow morning because of the higher humidity and then by Monday dew points will be in the 70s that is at the top of the humidity scale and we are not going to see a drop in humidity until potentially early next week so that means morning lows this week you're not going to need a sweater at all this week, unlike last week. Morning lows are going to be near 70 degrees. That is going to run quite a bit above the average in the upper 50s, like what we're experiencing right now. I mentioned we're going to see increasing cirrus clouds today. We're already seeing increasing cirrus clouds across West Texas. The reason for that is Hurricane Norma, Category 2 hurricane, going to be making its way through Cabo San Lucas and across parts of Mexico. Now, we are not going to see direct rain from Norma, but we are going to see some energy and moisture slung our way so that by Monday we'll have a chance for some rain about 40% chance so it's going to be hit or miss and we're going to have hit or miss rain Tuesday and Wednesday as well at 30% chance for isolated showers and storms the way I'd like to describe the upcoming week is very spring like in that it's not going to be cool but it is going to be uh, pretty mild with highs in the 80s and daily there will be a chance for an isolated shower or storm coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk about one of the pumpkin patches out there that things are going to be pretty nice for the weather. And I'll take a look at your state park forecast. A lot of people are going to be trying to enjoy the weather this weekend. More news after the break. Good morning and welcome back. Happening today, the 15th year of Luminaria. So the event brings the city's vibrant arts community to Hemisphere Park, the newly renovated Hemisphere, and it is amazing if you haven't been out there yet. So it features a wide range of art forms. you got music, dance, theater. The festival is known for the large-scale light shows and projection mapping on historic buildings. And for the Luminaria executive director, it is all about celebrating the right way. This year is our 15th anniversary, so we're celebrating quinceañera style, very San Antonio, very uh, roots and cultural, and we just want to celebrate the authentic side of San Antonio, which is, you know, everything, our food, our art, our music, our paintings. So, kicks off this evening, 6 o'clock, goes until midnight. All of this again, Hemisphere and the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center could not recommend more, especially if it's going to be nice out. Time now, 823, 61 degrees. We got a lot more to come here on GMA, GMSA. After the break, David Elder talking sushi, an all-you-can-eat sushi restaurant in shirts. Challenge accepted. We're going to check out their loaded sushi boats. All right, Casey, so now in front of us we have two boats, we and do. this is loaded up. Fried sushi, you have something a little more natural, right? This is like no fried food on this side, and then you have the hibachi over here, udon noodles, some calamari, and some tempura right in front of us as well. How often do you eat sushi, Casey? Are you coming out with the family, or is it more of like a work thing when you're coming out with a group of buddies from work? I mean, how do you do it? Definitely a family thing. I started my all my kids young, even my three-year-old eat sushi already. Good so, for you, that's yeah, good. Yeah, we definitely try and eat it at least once every other week. Uh, um, and we just enjoy it, it's a good time. We kind of get this presentation and just kind of enjoy the scenery, the taste, the flavors, and introducing the kids to all the new stuff. Uh, we are starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. It is 62 degrees now, but it is raising temps through the morning. We saw a dip into the 50s. Yeah. And, well, Sarah, you said it best. Good morning, by the way. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It is Saturday, October 21st. So, yeah, we dipped in the 50s, right. which was nice. I'm not going to lie, I haven't been outside. But 
It is going to be record-breaking heat today? It is, Max, by a degree or two. Okay, okay, so we are, even though we started in the 50s, we're going to end up in the 90s this afternoon, a lot like yesterday. So we started off at 59 degrees outside. Winds are from the west-northwest at about 5 miles per hour. Notice in this picture here that you can very clearly see a milky tint to the sky. These are those high thin cirrus clouds that are going to be increasing throughout the day today. And so we're going to have partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. Notice that humidity is low. Do points are in the 40s humidity at 64 percent go ahead and go out to the pumpkin patch today just know that if you show up with sweaters you're not going to need them in the afternoon because <laughs> temperatures are going to be in the 90s this afternoon right around 93 for the high south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour by the way on kset.com we have a pumpkin patch map you can find out where some of the local pumpkin patches are and enjoy a crisp fall day not a cool fall day but the humidity will be low. By the way, if you are planning on being outside, especially during the peak heat of the day at any of our many state parks, know that you're going to want to take some water with you because, again, it will be a hot one. Temperatures are going to climb to 93 at Devils River State Natural Area, Enchanted Rock 91, Guadalupe River 93, Lost Maples 88 for the high today. By the way, I checked with Lost Maples the fall foliage report. None of the trees have started to turn yet. In fact, if any of the trees are turning, it's because the drought it's been so bad, but usually we see color in Lost Maples in November, so keep that in mind. Here's what your weather need to know is bye bye to those cool mornings. This is the coolest we will be outside right now for the next about five to seven days. Humidity is going to be increasing as early as tomorrow. We'll see morning fog and then we'll have some spotty rain next week, all because of a Pacific hurricane. I'll have those details coming up next. Thank you, Sarah. So this morning, we are working to learn more about this man, 40-year-old Jesus Prado. So he's the suspect accused of shooting two San Antonio police officers. What we know right now is Prado came to a house to retrieve his children. An argument then broke out between Prado and his wife. He started to douse the home in gasoline, threatening to set it on fire. Both of the officers, they responded. They were standing in a cul-de-sac outside the home. The suspect, Prado, made his way upstairs to the second floor. He had a gun. He started shooting. He's now charged with two counts of attempted capital murder of a police officer, one count of deadly conduct. His bond set at $3 million, according to the Bear County Jail. Obviously, a story we have been following very closely since it unfolded on Thursday. Now, luckily, the two officers who were shot, they're expected to survive. But this story really reveals how dangerous it is for officers who respond to domestic violence calls. Our KSAT investigates team finds that SAPD responds to thousands of these calls each and every year. And as Lee Waldman reports, they are some of the deadliest that SAPD has to face. Volatile, dangerous, and emotional calls. That's how San Antonio Police Chief William McManus is describing calls for domestic violence after two of his officers were shot last night. We were very fortunate tonight that we didn't have the, the two initial officers um, killed and we didn't have the officers who went in to extract them injured. The chief says they were called when this man, 40-year-old Jesus Prado, allegedly came to pick up his children and got into a fight with his wife. Bear County court records show she filed for divorce in March. McManus says Prado started dumping gasoline in the home. According to police, when officers arrived, Prado started shooting. Officers arrived on the scene and they went into a very, very hot zone. Between 2022 and so far in 2023, there's been 67,895 calls for domestic or family violence. 2,328 of those involved a weapon, like a gun or knife. It's been constant. It's not something new that's arisen today or yesterday. Captain Rene Gallegos with the Special Victims Unit responds to these types of calls every day. He says there's added danger when the suspect has access to the home. So your chances of it happening again or escalating are huge. Um, so we are always correlating. We're always wor worried about family violence and how it correlates to our murder numbers. You have two separate charges of attempted capital murder of a police officer. They're both first degree felonies. Bond is set at $1 million on each of these two charges. With an additional charge of deadly conduct with a firearm, Prado's bond has been set at $3 million. For Case That Investigates, I'm Lee Waldman. So, SAPD plans to hold open houses focusing on domestic violence. 
and that is set for Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at all police substations. Anyone who has any questions about where, when, how to get there, we have all that information. Just head to ksat.com. All the resources will be available at these open houses. All right, now to politics. Three Texas Republicans making moves to try to become the next U.S. House Speaker. All of this as the search drags on and the votes really aren't very fruitful. So Pete Sessions out of Waco, he says he's running for Speaker. Joey Arrington out of Lubbock and Roger Williams of William Willow Park, both thinking about trying to fill the role. So this comes as the Republicans have dropped Jim Jordan as their nominee. Jordan has failed to get to the Speaker again. Third time, not once, not twice, but three times. Now many in the GOP, they're frustrated, they're concerned, and they're angry because simply they can't find a path forward. Sticking with politics, according to campaign finance report covering July through September, State Senator Roland Gutierrez, who you're looking at right now on the screen, he raised about $630,000 in the first months of his U.S. Senate campaign. He is one of eight Democrats running for the party's top nomination to take on U.S. Senator Ted Cruz in 2024. Another big name in this race, U.S. Rep. Colin Allred, a three-term congressman from Dallas. So remember how we said 300,000? Well, Colin Allred brought in 4.7 million in the same span. Gutierrez reportedly having about $380,000 on hand as of September 30th. Allred has 7.9 million. So our Texas heat, we've seen a lot of it, is it having an impact on our state economy? Well. That's the theory, according to analysis by economists at the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. Experts say with each degree of warming here in the state, it actually slows Texas's economy. So the extreme heat this year, they're saying it could have cost the Texas economy, get this, $24 billion. This is a new study. The Texas economy was twice as impacted by heat than the rest of the country. The extreme heat keeps people at home rather than going out to shop or to go to dinner. It also prompts some people to make vacation plans in cooler places than to Texas. People don't want to come to a 107 degree place. It can also reduce crops, slow down construction projects, negatively impact business productivity. All right, there's a lot going on in and around San Antonio this weekend happening today. Several events we want to let you know about. We're going to start with a drive through flu shot event. Vaccinations available for kids and adults, as long as your kid is six months and older. You do need to register first. All the info, just head to ksat.com. And of course, starting in just a few minutes in Floresville, a big fall festival happening at Helton Nature Park. So you can check it out 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. The event is free, open to the public. There's going to be a maze, costume contests, animal shows, pecan baking contests, and of course, we got food and music. And then also at 9, Dog Day at the San Antonio Zoo. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a great day. The event includes some special activities. We have dog costume parades, dog trick-or-treating, some of the things you need to know. If you do plan on taking your pup, we have all those details. Just head to ksat.com. And as Sarah Spivey has been saying, if you do want to go enjoy these family-friendly events, go early before we see record-breaking heat. It is only 62 degrees out, and you still got about 20 minutes before all these events kick off. Coming up on GMSA, we head to Hondo when we meet the ladies of the Hondo Garden Club and how they are beautifying their community. Welcome back. The Hondo Garden Club was established in 1948 by a small group of women to beautify their town and better serve their community. Now, 75 years later, well, the club is still going strong. Sarah Costa met with the women of the Hondo Garden Club, learned about their passion, not just for gardening, but more importantly, giving back. If you've ever taken a drive and headed westbound on US Highway 90 and driven through the town of Hondo, you may have noticed the cozy cottage house called the Hondo Garden Club Thrift Shop. You'd be surprised what people donate. It's unbelievable. Everything in here was donated and we process it. Inside of the cottage, you'll find gently used clothes for adults and children, dinnerware, books and antiques. The thrift shop is one of the many ways the Hondo Garden Club has been raising money for 75 years to give back to the community. Sometimes we pull in $1,000 a week, so that's not bad, you know, so we have that money to to give back. Lee Taylor is a former president of the club and current president of the Texas Garden Clubs. She says the Garden Club is so much more than a club just for gardening. It makes me feel more connected completely, you know, to everything. 
it's just like a, our own little support group if we have problems or things happen. You know, it's just we all band together. Current President Mindy Coyne says they have common interest, a love for gardening and helping the community. We love nature, we love helping our community, and we get a lot of joy working together to make the community more beautiful and it makes us feel more proud of Hondo. The club has done so much for the Hondo community, from beautifying areas like local elementary schools and the football stadium with pocket gardens, to giving back scholarships and donating to hundreds of organizations in Hondo over their 75 years. Coin says to join them, you don't even have to know how to garden because to them, it's so much more than just gardening. A lot of people say, I don't want to be in the garden club. I don't know anything about gardening. And I say, you don't have to. If you like helping the community and working hard, then come on in. We'll teach you about gardening. If you want to meet the Hondo Garden Club or visit their thrift shop, they're open every Thursday from 1 to 5 right off US 90. Happy gardening. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Thanks so much, Sarah. Yes, Sarah's Tommy, my fair share of things about gardening because I do not have a green thumb. Well, today is going to be a day where it is going to be hot. The forecast high in San Antonio is 93. That is likely to beat a record set back in 1979. In Del Rio, likely going to see some record heat as well. 94 for the forecast high, beating out the record set back in 2012. So enjoy the cooler temperatures right now over the next couple of hours before it gets into the 80s. It'll be in the 80s by noon. 59 degrees in San Antonio, 60 in New Brown. Good morning in Yavaldi, where it's 61. We were just talking about Hondo, 53 degrees in Hondo, 54 in Kerrville, 53 in Comfort, 58 at Stinson, 63 in Divine, and it's 61 in Canyon Lake. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Again, by uh, 10, we're already going to be in the mid 70s. So just in the next hour and a half, in the mid 70s, up from the 50s right now. By noon, 86 degrees. Skies are going to become a little bit more milky with the uh, cirrus clouds out there, those high thin cirrus clouds. So you'll notice that outside today. 93 degrees for the forecast high. And then this evening, the weather's going to be pretty nice for any kind of football games or things like that. You won't need the sweater. Temperatures will be in the 80s after sunset. Fall into the 70s by midnight as uh, clouds will increase. Now it is going to feel great outside today in spite of the fact that it's going to be warm and the reason for that is humidity will be low. So if you find some shade during the peak heat of the day, it's still going to feel great. But as early as tomorrow morning, we're going to see dew points back into the muggy category and we're going to see dew points in the muggy category all week long. So say goodbye to those cool mornings, those dry afternoons. It is going to be noticeably humid in the week ahead. And in fact, by tomorrow morning, we will be looking at some areas of patchy fog. You can see that here in the future cast. So visibility could be reduced in the early morning hours tomorrow. So if you have an early morning mass, early morning activities, know that you could be dealing with some of that fog. Looking at your weekend forecasts, just to recap uh, again today, 93 degrees for the high, but at least we'll have low humidity tomorrow. Cooler outside 86, but it will be noticeably humid out there. We're seeing those increasing cirrus clouds from Hurricane Norma, which is a Category 2 hurricane heading for Cabo San Lucas and then across parts of the western coast of Mexico. Now, although we're not going to see direct rain from Norma, we are going to see upper level energy and moisture thrown our way so that by Monday we'll have some areas of rain. Not guaranteed rain for everybody. Coverage should be about 40%, but we have the energy and moisture in place. And then we have an upper level low going to be moving toward Texas in the week ahead as well. So Tuesday and Wednesday, we're also going to have a chance for isolated rain, about 30% on Tuesday and Wednesday, only 20% Thursday and Friday. But as you can see in the week ahead, much more wild, mild than the last week that we saw with temperatures in the morning near 70 degrees, so not cool in the slightest. And then in the afternoon, mild with highs in the mid 80s, just a little bit warmer than seasonably average. Hey, coming up in the forecast, we got the pollen count in. I'll show you that and we'll talk a little bit uh, about uh, the potential for uh, that rain next week, a little bit more in depth coming up in just a bit.
The national tour of Six the Musical is here in San Antonio. It's an exciting show and we caught up with one of the cast members backstage here at the Majestic. It's unlike any musical you've ever been to before. It's really like a concert. We're interacting with the audience the whole time. We have microphones handheld. We're, when we're not singing our own song, we're backup dancing and backup singing for one another. And it's run like a competition, so it's very interactive. So if you're familiar at all with The Six Wives of Henry VIII, we're really doing a show about that. The premise is these queens are competing for who had it the worst from Henry VIII. And a lot of people know them by kind of what they've been reduced to. Divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. Um, and these queens are coming together to basically make their case for who had it the worst. We wanted to feel like pop stars, um, so they designed these incredible costumes. Um, they're made out of plastic and glitter and studs and all these beautiful things that you can see. So we're really shining on stage, catching the lights and catching the eyes of the people in the audience. For more information on how to get tickets to Six and Musical, just go to ksat.com. Reporting in the Majestic, Danielle Ivara, KSAT 12 News. All right, we are getting a closer look and we're getting closer and closer to this year's Dia de los Muertos Festival. It is happening in just a week, October 28th and 29th at Hemisphere Park. You can get tickets, you can learn all about the event, and it's so easy. You pull out the phone, pull out the camera app, scan the QR code on your screen. It'll take you right to everything you need to know. Make sure you can enjoy in all of the family-friendly fun. Time now, just about 8.54, 64 degrees. So we started, remember, we dipped down into the 50s earlier today, and we could be experiencing some record-setting heat later in the day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Well, we're looking at a pollen count today uh, that looks pretty good. You know, molds are low at 230, ragweed is low and pigweed is low as well. As far as temperatures out there right now, it's in the 50s and uh, now it's in the 60s. <laughs> Just in the last minute, it changed to 65 degrees, but we're going to have a bit of a weather whiplash today. Big swing in temperatures, 59 was the low this morning, 93 this afternoon, that's a 34 degree swing. Oh my goodness, we got the weather swings, we have record breaking heat, we had 50 degrees earlier. I mean, this is keeping your toes. Yeah, and there's a small chance for rain this week too. All right, don't go anywhere. We have a lot more to talk about on GMSA. We'll be right back. <laughs> 